Welcome to another video. I was out here earlier this morning, shot some footage of a spoonbill, which you'll see a little later. But I'm in search of a male spoonbill. This time of year they're mating, and so their colors are a little different. More vibrant red than pink. A lot of people confuse spoonbills with flamingos. Flamingos are more orange, they're a much bigger bird. Spoonbills are squattier and they're a pink bird. A lot of people say, oh, you have to go out to the Everglades to find all these fancy birds. Now they're right here, a couple blocks from my house actually, on this little lake. I'll point out some birds as I go along. If I see some osprey or some herons. There's an anhinga right over there, some little blue herons. So I'll point them out, it's getting a little windy. Hopefully we'll find a spoonbill though. All right, see you in a bit. We'll look, walk along here, see what we can find. There's the herons. They usually don't get too jumpy. There's three of them here. Actually four of them, there's one around the corner there. That's a lot, you usually see one or two together. I'm, it's pretty rare to see four of them together why they're all yapping at each other. They're a little territorial. There's some good shots here. Certain times of the year, if you look out there, you can see those reeds. There are images to be had here. I always look at this corner over here and think that there's a good long exposure shot, depending on the lighting conditions. One of these days I'm gonna get one. I saw Thomas Heaton, his last couple of videos, he's been dealing with infrared. I bet you down in here, if I had an infrared camera, probably get a nice shot. So Thomas, if you're listening, bring your infrared camera and I'll bring you down here. Give you a nice tour of the area. You don't even have to bring me your book. I already own one. All right, back on search for that male spoonbill. Almost walked right past them. I talked about Egyptian geese. This one right here. And here's a heron sitting up on a clump of... He looks like he's not real happy with me being in the area getting eaten up by gnats right now. So I don't really want to stand here. He might let me get a little closer. He's got his eye on me, obviously, you can tell. Yeah, I'm not going to hurt you. And there's an anhinga over there. That would have made a nice photograph if I had my camera with me. Earlier I talked about infrared. I would bet that that would make a very good infrared photograph. Bright blue sky with that coconut palm. Somewhere there's a good composition in there with the right lighting, the right angle. I haven't quite found it yet. I haven't quite gotten the proper lighting yet. People that are better at woodlands photography than me, not particularly, it's not my strong suit. Might be one of you looking right now at this video saying, there it is, there's your composition. That there might be it with the right sky, or maybe no sky, or maybe just a little cloud, puff of a cloud above. 
but I think that would make a nice composition. Okay, there's actually two spoonbills. I don't want to talk too much. And maybe what's scaring them away. There's one over here on the land. And then there's one right over here in the water. I believe this is the one that just flew away from me on the other side. Same one I saw this morning because this is the same general area I saw them this morning. I, I think it could be a male, but I think it's a female. They're usually in pairs a lot of times, so that might be the male. And this might be the female. I don't know if she's going to let me get any closer to her. Something got eaten. Yeah, she's kind of walking away. What you generally have to do is just sit be quiet, stay, stay still, so that they don't feel threatened, and then sometimes they'll come back towards you. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have my camera up pretty much where I want to photograph them so that when I'm ready for the photograph, I don't have to move a lot. So I'm going to come down here and stay quiet for a moment, and maybe this one will actually come back towards me. There's the spoonbill. If you look closely, you can see the little spoon type thing at the end of her beak. The edges of that, uh, where you see the little red on the fringe, a male, all that will be bright red. during mating season. There'd be a big patch of it that's red. But there's your rosate spoonbill. We were kind of lucky to find one. I like to complain about how down in South Florida we don't get the colors that you get around, especially the Northeast in the fall. But I also have to understand that we have beautiful seascapes and we have birds like this that I can walk a block or two and, and there they are. So there's trade-offs to no matter where you live in the country. Maybe the point is to just go out and enjoy what it is that you have in your area and photograph it. Sometimes you don't have to travel 3,000 miles. You can walk two blocks. I think sometimes I got jaded over the years because I see them so often that I think, eh, it's just a spoonbill, eh, oh, it's just another heron. And then you realize that a large swath of the world has never seen one in person, especially a spoonbill. So I'm very fortunate. So I'm going to end with just a couple of different photographs of spoonbills and herons and a couple of other birds that I've taken in the last few months and even this morning when I was filming the other part of this uh, video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, take good care.